Okay, everybody. Our uh, our next keynote is with uh, Carrie okay. Millen, the master facilitator at Learn2. Um, and Carrie spent uh, the last 20 years uh, committing to help uh, learners discover that the impossible is achievable. And she does that by accepting and respecting the value each learner uh, brings to the participant-driven experience and celebrates their authenticity. Uh, she's been on all sides of the learning table, uh, corporate learning leader, uh, learning solution provider, certified sales professional of learning and, uh, and participant. And as you'll clearly see, uh, Carrie's an awesomest. I, I stole that from uh, from her profile. <laughs> and she's and you'll, you'll also see she's known for her energy, boldness, and creativity, all of which uh, helps drive business outcomes. And she's going to be talking to us today about the learning conundrum and why putting participants behind the wheel creates learning and impact. So everyone, please join me in welcoming Carrie Millen. Carrie, go ahead, take it away. Thanks, Bobby. You've been stuck in the same cycle of learning and development, stuck in this kind of traffic. 80% of your business is probably lights on, keeping the business going, and only 20% is net new, really cool stuff. You're often forgotten every time the business needs to launch something. Oh, by the way, can you turn turning uh, learning around in just two weeks? Your execs are never satisfied. They cut your budgets and they expect more from your team when it comes to performance. You really want to leave a lasting impression on the business and you're desperate for ways to be able to do that. What if you can break free from the pack? What if you can work less and achieve more? Get more credit for the impact you actually make on the business. Stop getting teams and budgets cut. Hold participants and their leaders responsible. You know, have more people with an active IDP and ignite your love for learning. All of that and more is available for you when you're doing participant-driven learning, allowing them to drive. So let's meet you where you are on the road right now. What's happening in your business? Log on to menti.com or Click on the QR code that you can see there. And I think Charlene or Ashley is also dropping it into chat. You can click, connect directly to that link. Five questions looking at everything from your entry to the impact you have in the organization. I'll give you a moment to complete that. We really care where you are and where you are will impact our conversation today. And I know it's kind of ironic. I'm, it's all about participant driven, yet you're behind the screen and I'm driving this presentation. The irony doesn't go by me, don't you worry. So as you, ask, have you, as you have questions, drop them into chat. We'll get to them at the end of the session. So who really is driving your learning? Because the driver really matters. Is your learning being driven by the bus driver? All your participants, up on the bus, they sit in their seat, their row A1, and off you go. The bus driver determines where you go, how fast you go, where you stop. The passengers or participants are on their phone, they might be asleep, they really have no choice in the experience, they're just following along. And completion really is when you stop the bus, doors open, people hop off, and they never look back. Or is your learning driven by participants? best analogy we have are bumper cars. You are all in in a bumper car experience. And this is not you in your rational mind, bumper car experience. I'm an adult, bumper cars are boring. Forget that. 10 years old, this is your first time you can ever drive by yourself. That kind of bumper car experience. So you're all in. There's buzz, excitement. You are, you're, you're gripping the steering wheel extra tight. You drive with both hands on the wheel, there is no time to take a selfie. Nothing exists outside of the walls of this ride. And you get some challenges along the way. Driving a bumper car isn't as easy as it looked like from the sidelines. And you bump into a few things, you figure out how to use the brake, how to reverse. The greatest thing about it is you thought ahead, you brought a buddy along with you, so you also have support in that experience. They can let you know, watch out on your right, someone's gonna hit you or turn quickly. All of those things really embody what participant-driven learning is all about, just like bumper cars. There are five main steps to participant-driven learning from the entry. People enter where they come from, they bounce around in the experience, we land them softly, integrate, 
and actually have an impact in the business. When you put your participants in the driver's seat, they are having an incredible experience and you are seeing the results. So here's how you rated when we sent the survey out for you. Nice, loving all the responses. This is fantastic. So where the first line, that gray one is about entry. And I see there's a lot of great things that are happening in your business and there's still some areas that we can focus on. Let's give you some of our best practices tidbits. The entry, you really wanna set them up for success. So back to the ride, put your 10 year old hat on again. You can feel the buzz, you've got excitement. You're standing in line, you're probably, you're a 10 year old, you're probably jittering. You've set your intention, you've chosen your car. Which car are you choosing there? I want that TO1, number eight. You've been following the leaderboard, maybe on your phone, seeing who some of the best scores are. You take a deep breath as the ride slows down. The gates open and off you go. Mad dash to claim your car. You really wanna be in the room where this happens. You wanna be on the ride where this happens because this is where all the excitement is. So what does this look like actually in a virtual or professional or in a live classroom? Well, it's about welcoming participants. Show the participants that they matter. Who am I? What do I care about? Where am I in the, what is my value? And the thing is, you've got to do something with it. Amy, who works on my team says, don't ask a question if you're not going to do something with it. Ask those questions and ensure that is incorporated into the participant-driven learning, either by matching them up in accountability partners, setting them up in breakout rooms, celebrating their diverse backgrounds, if you collect data, do something with it. And when you do that and they're connected and they feel like they matter, this is what they're saying, I'm ready, give me the keys. Connecting to their world often is missed on the bus. You just hop on the bus and take off. So find ways to connect them in their entry. One of the ways we do it is connecting participant and their challenges to the learning. They're not going to connect the dots themselves. It's our role as learning and development professionals to do that. When you do, you lock in ownership and responsibility. First step is list all the challenges. What are all the challenges you're currently having, either in general or in relation to one strategic pillar in the business? Then choose one of those challenges that matters to you, the participant. And then what's the impact if this is not addressed? And that gets their stomach a little off. Ooh, I've been letting this slide. You know, we redo that report five times every month. And you know what? If this keeps going, I might lose one of my team members. Make it real for them. They now have this as almost like a little angel sitting on their shoulder for that whole experience going, hmm, as they're looking at challenges and they're learning things, they're starting to connect it to their world. They are locked and loaded and present for the experience you're putting them in. It allows them to know they matter, they own this, and guess what? The business trusts me. That's pretty important. We've heard a lot of the different conversations today in this experience, all throughout the OPAL presentations about how important it is to trust your employees. So we talked about the gray one. Now we're on to red, 2.6 out of a possible four score. Fantastic. This is all about the experience. And that's really, as L&D professionals, what lights us up the most. A participant-driven experience is like no other. I started my career 25 years ago at Dale Carnegie. Here I am 25 years later doing participant-driven learning 100% of the time. And God, it fills my heart. Holy moly. So we're back on the cars. You are now on the car and the race or the ride is taking off both hands on the wheel and go. You get to choose whether you go right, whether you go left, speed up, slow down. If you're, uh, it's a little awkward, as you said, you know, sometimes you get stuck and your buddy's got your back. Nothing else matters outside of this ride. Oh, the bells and whistles are going off. You are completely present. And guess what? There is no time to check your phone. You are hands on. As a participant, you have your eyes in many different directions in a participant-driven experience. It's not just all about you. Actually about yourself, your peers, and the impact in the room or in the space. Because the participants are generating the learning. They're not consuming it like they are on the bus. 
participants care about and what matters to the participant is giving them choice and helping them self-recognize strengths and blind spots. When it comes to the peers, my insights matter. What I have to say matters to my peers. I'm accountable to my peers. They're accountable to me. And all this diverse thought in this experience has helped open my eyes even more. And finally, the impact. They really realize that their action or inaction actually matters. It matters in this experience. They matter as an employee. We heard just about the scores um, earlier on, on the talk at uh, Renta Center. They matter and this helps them do it. Participants are also supported by the facilitators. Don't, don't keep, they still exist. Here's the role of a facilitator in participant driven. There's three main areas. And in this, you need to trust the process and your people. You're going to be narrating. You're going to be telling the story, setting the context, bringing them in, rallying them together. I think about the grandfather in The Princess Bride when it comes to narration. You're holding space and both arms kind of holding space. You hold the space for them. You create that emotional and uh, safety for them. You are there holding that space. And sometimes you need to nudge. Sometimes they haven't quite connected the dots. And your role every once in a while is like that person that runs the bumper car ride. You hop out of the, the, the place, you get down, you just give them a little nudge. We always nudge with questions, not with content. So the facilitator and the participant intertwined within this experience. The greatest learning surface as you help participants come out of this learning and land. So let's see where you are when it comes to landing. Okay, of all the areas, landing is the lowest here. And I would say it always is. Think about the bus. The bus often stops and opens the door and we're done. We get so involved often in conversations that um, our time ticks off and we don't have enough time to land them. Landing is so important. And when you land, the ride slows and slows down. Now is time to pull out your phone and only now take a selfie and celebrate. Tell other people how awesome this experience is. When you start doing that, you know it's working because people actually show up outside of the room where learning is happening. You get out of your ride, you get your footing, you check the scoreboard, see how well you did, and you start to commit, you already before you're off of that ride committing to what is the next ride you're gonna hop on. And you know it's working because you're getting tons of recommendations and more people are coming to your ride. Landing's often, often sacrificed, as I mentioned, on the bus. It's just, just no time, gotta get on to the next one. So here's how it works in Participant Driven. It's another ride analogy. It's multiple layers of landing. We drop someone off that slide at the top and they just landed. Uh, those are served for water, those are a reserve for water rides. Each bump as you go down, we start with results. How did you do? How did you show up as an individual? How did you show up as a team? How are you going to apply these um, skills? Who's going to hold you accountable? And what is the impact you're making on the business? This creates a supportive and meaningful landing that guides you into and back to the real world. Here's how it works when it comes to actually in the classroom. We take, remember those three questions we looked at before your challenges? Take those challenges and now go, okay, I had these blind spots revealed that I didn't even realize I had. Okay, I'm gonna apply them to my challenge. What's most important for me to apply to my challenge? So right there, you've locked in my challenge, my learnings. Who do I need to collaborate with? And collaboration is so important. It, it makes sure there's diverse thought. It makes sure you're getting people like maybe finance involved, people up and down your value chain. How am I going to measure this? What are the metrics? What defines success? What defines done? And what do I think the golden egg? What's the value of completing this challenge? And this is so important because this challenge, you end up taking this content and going directly to your leader and going, there's a challenge in our business and I wanna solve it. Can I have the time, the resources to be able to solve it? And here's what it's gonna take when I do solve it. This kind of commitment drives participants' ownership. It drives their action. It drives things from the experience outside of the experience. 
So you have a pretty good idea about what participant driven is so far. So I'm going to ask you, where are you? you no, know, really, where are you? And stop. I know, I hope I have created such excitement around bumper cars. And you're saying, yeah, I'm completely on the bumper cars. Uh, everything I do is completely on the bumper cars. I'm just going to take a hard look in the mirror. Is it really the bumper cars? Or is it more like these antique cars where you think and the participants think they're in control, but really they're not. They've got their hands on the wheel, I know, but they actually don't get to choose if you stop, go forward uh, or move right to left. Your participants get behind the wheel and they can steer to their heart's content. And they don't really go anywhere, then you're probably in between. So, as you heard, taking things into action is so important. In a learning experience like today, it's all about the action you choose to take with what you've gained. So, your choice. If you're not sure, am I on the bus? Am I in the bumper car somewhere in between on those antique cars? You're not quite sure. We encourage you to take the participant driven assessment. You can scan the QR code on the screen. And I know it's also being uh, dropped into chat. This is uh, 15 to 20 questions and it'll give you a really good understanding about all of the areas of participant driven. As you can imagine, I couldn't squeeze them all in in a 25 minute talk. What we'll do afterwards is you and I'll sit down. No salespeople, just learning people to learning people and discuss where you are and look at some of the opportunities you have to elevate and um, drive some more impact in your business. If this is kind of exciting you, so option two is this is kind of exciting you, we would love you to join us on board the deck of the Titanic on April the 29th from 1 to 2 p.m. EST. Only participants in the Opal Group experience here have access to this complimentary experience where we will, where I will don my hat, become the chief officer on board the Titanic, and you will be responsible for saving the passengers, the crew, and the ship. Your actions or inactions will matter when you have the chance to change history. So either one of those, we'd love to see you on board. Now this isn't it, we're not quite there yet. We've still got some time. There's still some other things to focus on. Line number three, which is that orange near the bottom, one of the highest scores you've given yourself, which is integration. Disney does this best, retain, remember, reward. You've come off of a ride and you are dropped into the, um, dropped right into the gift shop. There's a reason that I have three sets of Mickey ears because of this. What does this look like in our world? Well, there's a personal integration, making commitments and letting other people know about those commitments and tracking and rewarding application. We strongly encourage every time you go out there and you use your coaching skills, you, um, we can record it actually on a participant portal. Fantastic. And we start rewarding people who are applying skills because we know those are leading indicators to future behavior change and success. Let the participants know that what they're doing matters coming out of the program. And there's integration systems. What are transferable assets? Never use anything in the experience unless it can be used outside of it. Every tool we have in Participant Driven, fillable PDF, they can use it right afterwards. Have your impact project, which we've been talking about all along, those challenges that you're working on, and support it with coaching. I heard Mandy speaking earlier in one of the talks about how important executive coaching is and being able to help people and coach them through. Connect it to your IDP and performance process. And one of our favorite things is brain trust. Peer mentoring circles where people come together, solve challenges and celebrate diverse thought. If this, this right now has not given you any ROI, it's given you behavior change and not ROI. So how do we do that? We look at ways to get you out of this traffic because you know you can't continue to stay in this traffic over and over again. We'll free you and get you out on the open road. And these are your first steps. So how did you rank yourself? We saw earlier, it was a three, fantastic. I'd love to get together and chat with some of you and finding out how you're doing it. Here's how we do it. 
when you are able to quantify business results coming out of your experiences, you are unforgettable and you get noticed in the business, both for your participants and the learning team. You go, you are now no longer in a car, you're in a plane. You're going faster, further, you're exceeding goals, increasing credibility and trust. Remember that challenge we talked about earlier? We saw step one of the challenge, step two, here's number three. You come back two, three, four months afterwards. What is the actual impact? What is that quantifiable value? We annualize it. And what are the ripple effects of it? How is it going throughout the business? What are those ripple effects? Because numbers are unforgettable. Numbers make people unforgettable. Numbers also level the playing field. Because sometimes some of our quietest people are the ones that make the biggest impact. And if we're all talking numbers, we're all equal. We're all are able to be compared. You're not all equal, but you're able to be compared on the same apples to apples. Sure, anyone can say that they have proof from participant-driven experiences. Yep, absolutely. We make an impact and here's the impact. Here's an example of impact from a program that I ran um, just this fall. We had uh, different levels, different cohorts running simultaneously, everything from professionals up to directors. Their reported quantifiable impact as a result of the experience and applying the skills on a specific project netted on average $126,000 per person. That is over the 10 time um, investment that we guarantee in coming into the program, actual real numbers. When you have those numbers, it elevates your learning organization. Okay, participant-driven experiences. You go from entry, you meet them where they are, pop them into the experience, hold that space for them, land them gently, integrate and make sure you have an impact. Doing all that will validate and accelerate your contributions to the business. As we mentioned, you've got a couple options. Take the assessment, meet us on board the Titanic, love to engage in conversations in the booth afterwards. So what are some of the questions that we have? Sorry, Carrie, trying to get myself um, unmuted there. Um, yeah, I, I was just trying to, uh, to to come back down to earth from uh, from my adventure. I went into bumper cars, and I'm saving the Titanic, and uh, and then I'm actually flying a plane. So uh, now now that I'm back on uh, on solid ground, let me get to a couple of the questions you have. You had mentioned something about a a, a brain trust, um, and and forgive me if you went over this in detail, but what really is that the the, the brain trust that you mentioned? Absolutely, I love to describe it. Five people walk into a bar. Um, and you walk into that bar or where five people walk into a brain trust, each share a challenge. You then vote on your, uh, you don't vote, you choose what challenge is best and most applicable for you as a group to solve. We practice asking questions and getting curious and understanding um, about that one challenge. Then we share lived experiences. Not I, you don't should on anybody. You say, in my experience, I've been able to solve it this way. And then you get that one person's action, um, committed to action and moving forward. Here's an example of what it actually looks like. Five steps. And what is so magical about it, two things about it, Bob. Bobby, is one, peers do it. Peers do it with each other. No, nobody else needs to get involved. Learning doesn't need to get involved. You're able to do it yourself. And when your employees start doing this, they solve their own problems and stop coming to leadership. So leaders can get more done and more problems get solved, it's win-win all the way around. So what, what, what kind of time did it take to, to create like this, uh, the, the save the, the Titanic? And, and, and um, I, I, how, how better else to put this? I mean, what what'd you have to do to kind of get it off the ground, if you will, into the water? Absolutely. Well, you know what? It's actually been in the water for the last 20 years and only digital did we convert it to digitally in the last obviously 18 months and to, and we pivoted it from live to digital in about two weeks before we were running them i think i in the last since covid started i've run about 50 myself with different clients south africa in iceland all over the world we've been able to um deliver not deliver create the experience for Save the Titanic. About a quarter of a million people have actually gone through it around the globe and nobody knows the secret to save the passengers, the crew and the ship. 
<laughs> well, they will go through the experience. And, and that, that leads me to another question. I mean, are they, are, are these experiences, are, are they one big session or can they do it like in, in smaller sessions? What we found works best in the digital environment is either breaking things into two hour segments and they could be run over the same day or multiple days or a four hour chunk that can be run beginning to end. Um, and you would, you go, nobody's going to sit there for four hours. Well, if you haven't figured out, there's no sitting. <laughs> hands on through that experience. Those two hands are on the wheel. There's not even time to take that selfie in those experience. So we either, as I said, breaking up into two um, hour segments and or a four hour chunk, a two hour chunk. And then we add a four hour chunk onto it. Okay, good. Yeah, I, I couldn't even uh, I couldn't even get myself unmuted, let alone take my hands off the wheel. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to seeing what that's all about. So unfortunately, right now we're, we're out of time, uh, Carrie. So what uh, a fantastic discussion about the, about the benefits of participant driven uh, learning opportunities and uh, and showcasing how they can become the engine that really drives the experience. So, uh, again, uh, thanks so much for joining us today, Carrie. Thanks a lot. Look forward to seeing you on board the Titanic. <laughs>